Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 where I'm continuing my shuttle constructed Mars mission. Uh, these launches all occurred during live streams on Twitch and the music is from a shuffled playlist that sometimes fits great, other times not at all. This time it fit pretty good because it so happened that Dragonborn from Skyrim started playing. And now the last time we tried to launch the shuttle on launch pad 39A from the real KSC pack, it didn't go so well and I had to use the regular launch pad. But, uh, well, let's take a look at how it goes here. The payload is simply more xenon fuel for our Mars mission currently parked around the moon along with the Tug and the Centaur stage. And here we go. And for some reason, I don't understand, it starts rotating. And you can see, it, it's rotating pretty badly. But KOS eventually catches it and goes to the position that it's supposed to go to. But I don't think that roll initially was due to the KOS script. It was probably due to some other collision or something, I don't know. So, this pad has suddenly become more problematic recently, and I don't know why. Uh, of course, at least that was better than the previous attempts where everything just exploded, so I guess we're headed in the right direction, but I would still like that to go back to the way it was when I first started using Launchpad 39A, where it was very clean and and in its own way very inspiring. It was nice to use that launch pad with uh, the right look to it for the shuttle. Of course I wish we were launching in daylight but uh, right now the moon is in position such that we have to launch at night in order to get there efficiently. We could do an off-plane transfer but I do want to do it efficiently. So anyway here we are and we'll use the OMS engines to get to orbit and there's the cargo with the Centaur G stage and the tug and six tons of xenon fuel. Now that's the problem. Uh, we have demonstrated that we can refuel the mission around the moon using the shuttle but it's gonna take quite a lot more flights, about 10. And I decided that having demonstrated that it's possible and having constructed the mission with the shuttle maybe I should use something else. Thinking about what else I should use, since it is an international Mars mission, I figured we should pick some launcher from somewhere else. People had suggested Buran, but that hardly improves on the payload situation. I mean, uh, not enough to make it worthwhile. And besides, all the trouble that it would take to try and use Buran and land it would still be annoying. And also, Dequeue's Buran, which is the only good looking one I think right now, uh, though there are other mods with Burans in them. Uh, it doesn't work anymore. Energia does though, the launcher for Buran. And I like Energia a whole lot more than I like Buran. Buran was sort of like military bureaucracy telling the Soviet engineers that they wanted something exactly like the shuttle. And the Soviet engineers had other ideas, they had better ideas for what should be a shuttle. But they weren't allowed to do that because the military bureaucracy of the Soviet Union said we want something exactly like the shuttle because we don't know what the shuttle does. So, so they ended up making something like that, which is, was a bad idea, very costly, and ended up crippling Energia. And when I say crippling Energia, well, the Soviet engineers really wanted to make Energia. And they conceded to make Buran because that's the only way they could get the military bureaucracy along with it. But Energia was always meant to be its own standalone launcher. If you take a look at the stack, it weighs about 2,400 tons compared to the shuttle stack's 2,100, so it's more than 10% more on the launch pad. It has more efficient engines, uh, on the boosters in particular, and yet, even though Buran is lighter than the shuttle, it only carries 5 tons more. And when you think about just a 10% more mass, the shuttle's mass, let's say, is 75 tons and it carries 25 tons of payload maximums for 100 tons. For 10 times, 10% uh, 10 more mass, you should get 110 tons altogether into orbit, including the shuttle itself. So, Buran, let's say it's just 75 tons, it should still be able to carry 35 tons with the extra 10% of mass on the launch pad. It, didn't, it does have the problem of launching from Baikonur, and I don't know whether its payload estimate is uh, from Baikonur or from an equivalent launch location. It might be just because it was launching from Baikonur, but still, as we see the disposal of the tug and tank that just arrived by one of the other tugs that were already on the station, still Soviet engineers came up with so many other brilliant ideas for shuttles that would have worked much better and involved much less drag on Energia, for instance. 
And, you know, th there are two good possibilities. One, just have it a, a completely automated system, like a precursor to that little shuttle that the U.S. Air Force currently uses. That would have been much more cost efficient, and it would allow them to focus on the reusability factor on Energia, instead of spending all this extra money trying to develop Beren. So a smaller shuttle like that, that was completely automated, may be capable of the cargo stuff that the that um, the U.S. shuttle was able to do, but automated, so it didn't have to have all the other systems, interactive systems, life support, etc., and crew cabin and all that business. Uh, another possibility is having the shuttle on top of Energia, which would suit it better, would allow them to develop the structures to have a full payload capacity and minimize drag. Then it'd be a precursor to BFR, if they actually made Energia reusable. And of course, the thrust of the energy engines would then be in line with the shuttle, and of course it would have to have smaller wings, otherwise it's going to cause stability problems. Or, if they have reusable boosters with energy, that means that they actually have wings at the bottom, because the boosters and the core were supposed to be flyback. And in that case, having larger wings at the top isn't a big deal. The uh, So I view like Baran was sort of hampering Energia. It, it could have been much better if only bureaucracy had allowed the Soviet engineers to do what they knew would have been better. But they were stuck copying a system that the capabilities of which they were just overestimating, frankly. So here we are with Energia. I, I, I don't have Baran. Deku's Baran doesn't work. It's because of the landing gear. The landing gear uh, does not want to retract and doesn't work very well, it's buggy. And this is from, I think, 1.1.3 or even before that. And we're using it at 1.3.1, so that's why the landing gear has that issue. But the rest of Energia works fine. Uh, the configuration is my own configuration for realism overhaul. And I'll link what I have so far in the video description. Uh, it does have configurations for Baran as well, but again, the landing gear issue is uh, no-go, basically. So here we go, booster separation. I must be missing some sort of um, decoupler part, separatron part, because those didn't really decouple very well. And of course they're supposed to separate from each other after that, but uh, I added uh, separatrons after this launch. The fairings are 10 tons apiece, so watch out for that. That's 20 tons of fairing right there going off. Inside the fairing I placed the Vesuvius stage from the Vulcan rocket. This was an Energia rocket which means it has 4 boosters, Vulcan has 8 boosters. So it has a much higher payload capacity, but I decided not to go with that. So there's the Ves Vesuvius stage with an RD57M engine. It's about 400 kilonewtons. You can think of it sort of like a BE3U. And um, it's sort of an equivalent stage as an S4B, except not quite as much, um, not quite as much thrust or mass. But sort of the same job. And what it's trying to do is send 54 tons to the moon. So that's the capability of Energia. 54 tons to the moon. Of course, part of that is the tug that's supposed to get into orbit around the moon and dock it. But you can see that in order to fit enough payload to justify using Energia, I had to use two tandem tanks instead of where the tank is normally supposed to be on that tug. This is actually the sized up model of the tug. The version that's inside the shuttle when we launched the xenon gas in the previous launch. That was a 1.875 meter form factor tug. This one's a 2.5 meter form factor. So this is bigger already. And even despite that, I couldn't fit enough uh, fuel in the center line. But at least with this tandem method, I can use the OMS engines on the tail there. Now I did make a second version of the tug per comments that have the engines tilted down instead of tilted in this direction. I don't know how to talk about the directions, but uh, so that there are four of them and that will allow uh, the maneuvering with more complicated payloads that might be longer and not quite fit in there. So that'll be a tug model too and I'll show that off eventually. But for now this uh, seemed to do. Uh, the docking ports were if we wanted to dispose of those two uh, tandem tanks I attached them with docking ports, but we were just going to dump the tug and the tanks together and impact them on the moon. So with this method, instead of using 10 shuttle launches, we end up only using two launches of Energia to fully fuel 
our Mars mission here. Which is good because eventually what we want to do is we want to send the Mars mission out, get into orbit around Mars, and then have it transfer back to Earth, and then capture again into orbit around Earth, and then refuel it. So if we're going to want to refuel it, uh, it'd be better not to have to use the shuttle to refuel it. Now, for any new modules that we want to add to this, I'll still use the shuttle because it's supposed to be co shuttle constructed. But I never said it was supposed to be shuttle refueled, so I'm gonna go with that. Um, the ship manifest had an odd bug where it was man creating fuel out of thin air while I transferred it. The tug was actually carrying more fuel than was necessary to refuel the mission, but it wasn't carrying that much spare. And part of the xenon gas that's left over in the tanks is due to the fact that I had that ship manifest bug where it was creating more mass. Uh, the ship mass, the vessel mass at the bottom there was actually going up while I was trying to transfer the xenon gas. Anyway, second launch of Energia does not launch xenon gas because we totally topped that off. And instead is launching methane and oxygen for the mission's OMS engines because it has too little methane and oxygen engines in the tail of it to do faster burns, though not that fast. Uh, they're about 30 kilonewtons apiece, and there's only a pair of them. But, uh, and also MMH and MON3. The mission has a set of MMH and MON3 RCS thrusters, though most of its RCS thrusters are methane and oxygen. The MMH and MON3 here is mainly to resupply the Orion service module. So that's, uh, once we actually get Orion to the mission, uh, it'll draw the fuel from the station itself. I need to work on the plumes on the energy rocket, that's something I have not done. Uh, so the configuration that I offer in the video description does not have any update on that. Uh, it also doesn't have RO configurations for numerous parts that come with the DECQ energy pack. Uh, a lot of those are the reusability stuff that I just haven't had time to test out. Uh, if I actually want to configure those properly, I have to test the reusability, which is time consuming. So basically, I've tried to configure tanks and engines as much as possible. Alright, so here we are, and once again going for TLI. Plenty of margin on this Vesuvius stage. While it would have been very limiting to try and construct the International Mars mission in a 51.4 degree orbit so that we could launch out of Baikonur, it's not much of a problem to transfer payloads from Baikonur to the moon. The inclination problem isn't that big a deal when your mission is all the way out at the moon anyway. So, yeah. So now it's quite possible to broaden our international scope and include places that might not be the most efficient place to launch from. Took a long while to rendezvous here. Um, There's quite a long burn for these little engines. But uh, yep, we managed it with great patience. And finally, we were approaching our Mars mission. I think it has about 11,000 to 12,000 meters per second of delta V in total with the ion engines. Um, it depends on when we use the methane and oxygen engines. If we deplete those first, of course, the ion engines have more delta V. If we hold off on using that fuel, then the ion engines have less delta V. But yeah, overall, pretty good deal using Energia to launch uh, the rest of this fuel. And with this mission, the whole thing is topped off. I still had that little transfer bug here. I don't know if uh, it captured that, but... That was very annoying. But that's why there's so much spare fuel, so much spare methane and oxygen in particular in the tug right now, and that's because we just had to dump it because ship manifest created it out of nowhere. Um, some of that fuel was just left over anyway because the tug didn't use all of its fuel, and we didn't have much space to transfer it to because we had already been carrying more than enough fuel to refuel the mission. I think I carried a thousand units of each extra anyway. But yeah, here we go, deorbiting this so that it smashes into the moon. And there we have it. This mission is now ready to go. Um, it does have two Kerbals on board. It has enough food, water, and oxygen. It has enough Delta V in theory. I just have to check that out because I'm not used to using ion engines. But it can go to Mars on a flyby. Well, not just flyby. It can make orbit around Mars, stay there, and come back. It just doesn't have a lander. And it doesn't have the Orion capsule. I asked chat whether they wanted me to proceed with that. And... Twitch chat said that they at least wanted to have an Orion capsule on it. Um, of course, that will reduce the Delta V of it somewhat, 
but I'll consider that, and of course, if we launch Orion or a lander along with the Centaur stages to transfer them to the moon, those will have to be on separate launches, so four launches total there. Um, we will have to do that with the shuttle, because I would consider those construction missions rather than refueling missions. Those will be the rules, okay? So anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.